Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to part seven of my visit to the Antiquarium in Weedon Beck. Yeah, this is part seven and the final part, don't get too carried away. And um, there isn't that much, so it's not gonna be as long as normal, I don't think. Um, I haven't put it together yet, but I don't think it's gonna be as long. Uh, and with that in mind, on the end of me showing you what's, what I've seen in the Antiquarium, I have a little something extra to show you. So, um, so let's get on and see the last bits of what I saw in the antiquarium. Check this out up here. That is a lump and a half. It's got um, cobwebs on it, so it's been up there a while. Oh, that one. Well, the spider's moved in recently. I'm wondering if that's French. Um, I'm not 100% certain. It might be Murano. It's not Kribska. Um, but it's a it's a huge bit. I mean, look at the size of the cup there. That's a decent sized mug. And then look at the size of that. It's huge. And I can't. And the price looks like it's fifty pounds, which is probably a good price for whoever made it. Starting off, we're looking at twentieth century glass website, and um, yeah, so. I'm pretty happy that that bowl that we're looking at, the blue one, is Murano because I found this one. I actually um, I typed in Murano bowl into this because I was looking in different suppliers and wasn't having much luck. And um, typed in Murano bowl and there were 831 items in there. And I have looked at all of them. And this is the only one that matches. So... So he's saying it's Murano, possibly made by Cristallo Venezia, which makes sense because I've been through everywhere. I have actually seen a kind of similarish bowl, not exactly the same as this one, in the same colorway with the dark blue with a yellow tinge at the bottom. There's a couple of them of them in there, but this bowl is exactly like the one we're looking we were looking at with the ends twisted slightly like this, and then it's got these like double forks on each side these two prongs so and yeah and a sort of like twist in the middle so I'm pretty happy that this is the bowl that we're looking at so it is a Murano bowl I'm living and learning because there are so many patterns I feel like I might have seen this somewhere else I will now now that I've actually found it by looking at everything um, I'll try and remember it this looks like it's a Murano walrus. Um, just from the way the base is made, I'm not certain. I've never seen a glass walrus before. I will try and find that. And then a bit of Caithness and a Chinese. How much is that? 25 pounds. That's actually, considering how much it costs to buy them by the truckload from. Uh, of Alibaba. £25 is a very nice price for that. So I started looking for um, glass walruses and yeah there's none like that on a little plinth that's like that. Um, there are plenty of them, very different. But some of them are really cute. I mean look at this one, look at those eyes. Yeah. So um, some of the little whiskers. Anyway, um, not found that one. So I thought, mm, let's go to 20th Century Glass, look through the Murano figures and see if we can find something anywhere near. I found this. It's a seer, seal, sorry. And what is interesting is the base if you look at the basis it's got the same base i think the one we're looking at i think i could see this concentric pattern because if you look at it from this angle you can't really see it but i think it had the same pattern had that look so i'm happy i feel comfy that it is a murano one because i found a few other things with similar bases but this is the closest animal with this base that i've managed to find um which is, as I said, a seal. Um, but um, yeah, there's birds and things like this with this kind of disc 
with the like molded columns around it so um yeah it's something that they do whether it's an absolute this is the Murano way nobody else uses it or not I can't 100% say but my feeling is uh, it, there's a very very good chance that it's Murano because of this because I tr quite trust this website I've not really found much that's wrong with it where I've, I've been able to go out and go yeah he's got this completely wrong it doesn't really happen so anyway uh, that's where I'm at so I think it's a uh, Murano uh, Warus. So I'm in Alibaba now looking at the um, section for high top crystal. And if you buy between 20 and 200, they cost $15 a piece, which is 12 pounds. Now you might say, um, you know, that's not, you know, if you're paying 25 for one and, it, and they've only paid 12. But you have to remember, I, I suspect this doesn't include shipping. Also, they, you have to buy 20. Um, and these guys, whoever's bought it, has got to make a profit. So, yeah, the, the once you've shipped it and the fact that someone's bought 20 and then has to sell them off one at a time um, and the, their overheads and having to put the money up front or borrow it or whatever, all of that, you start to see that 25 is actually not that bad. Um, so, yeah, this is the thing. Is that going to flip over? No, it's just showing. Now, high top crystal. I'm. Someone is saying that these are made somewhere else. I think, I, because high high top crystal makes trophies. I suspect high top is making the base, because I know that they polish flat surfaces and they do engraving. So, that's only my thoughts, um, but I am going to try and track this down. It's, if it's the last thing I do. Anyway, um, that's what it is. So there's this piece here. This was here last time. Yes, it was. I remember it has this label. So you can get in there and see it and focus when it focus. Well, there you go. Made in Canada. Now, is it here because the price is 70 pounds? It's a good colour. Um, don't know. I wouldn't have an idea how much these go for in Canada. Um, maybe I know I have can Canadian viewers. If anybody knows, is that a good price? Is that a bad price? Maybe you can tell me. I've not had much luck um, finding anything out about Giovanni glass. Um, yeah, there are other similar makers, Chalet Glass, and there's another one called Lorraine in um, Canada. But I haven't been able to find out anything about them as a company, how long they operated for, etc., etc. It's all really vague, and there's just like in this search, there's like a few bits at the top, and then it, then there's a bit of Lorraine, Chalet, uh, Lorraine. So yeah i don't think it's common glass i've looked in ebay as well there's none for sale so yeah it's a it's a bum bum and it's a blowout in trying to find out anything more about this company there's just nothing there no this looks like a romanian piece let me have a look underneath i think it is yeah but this is unusual. They don't normally have that. That's almost like some of the Chinese bits. It might be Chinese, but it doesn't have a broken pontal, so I don't think it is. So I think it is Romanian. Normally, if you're looking for 20th century glass for an obscure place, go to the 20th century glass website. But yeah, it's let me down this time. There's nothing in the Romanian stuff that's like this. I did general search and these are sort of like things these are Romanian I've seen these with labels on so I know this is right um, and some of them have like a curved top like this like the ones we were looking at there's a different one here 
with a curved top. I know that these are Romanian because I've seen the labels. So look, there's another one with a curved top. So they're not all straight across. That's one with a, oh, that's 20th century glass one. So there's another one with a curved top. Yeah, I'm not 100% certain still. Um, the ruffle that ru that's running around it in a spiral. I've seen that on Chinese vases, on the um, plum blossom vases. So it's very difficult to um, pin down and be certain of that one. And here we are with another plum blossom piece, but in blue this time. It's a bit smaller than the other one. How much do they want for this one? 20 pounds. So not as much as a bargain as the red one, but still it's, it's a nice color. Well, they're all nice colors because they, they, they're very bright. Little Chinese handles on them. So I know I keep going on about um, those Chinese vases. I'm not going to show you the picture. It's a plum blossom vase by the China National Light Industry Import Export Corporation uh, from the 1970s. It's what it is. So, but I was talking about the little Chinese wiggly handles, and I thought, I'll show you what I mean by that, why it's a Chinese feature. So I've just pulled up Chinese bronze vase, and look at these little handles here. Yeah, little wiggly handles, and here, and these are a bit bigger, but more little wiggly ones. That's a very similar shape. Um, you scroll down, and you just, and this is just me typing in Chinese bronze bars, and you can see it's a very common feature just to have uh, some of them based on little dragon's heads, and looks like looks like dogs and things, but yeah, they're just those look like elephant trunks. But you get the idea. There's lots of little wiggly handles that they put on the sides of their vases. It's it's their own style. They they're not copying anybody in there. If anybody else is doing it they are copying them because some of these are going to be thousands of years old so this is what i'm talking about when i talk about those little wiggly handles being like chinese vases i just wanted to show you what i meant and why it's this a specific chinese design also if you look at it these with these additions on them you know a lot of them have got i can't remember what the word is but you can see look this um surface additions like this yeah so they're not copying Murano at all they're just bright colors they they're a very Chinese design because of the the um, applique work that they do little flowers are added on just like they do with the bronze vases little handles just like the bronze vases and some of the vases are very similar shape you just look at that or that one or that one just like the vases and this one and this one and this one they're all as you know a lot of them have that shape so they're not going off and copying Murano like a lot of people have I've seen people say this is they're very distinctively Chinese vases so as I promised there is something I want to show you now uh, but before we do I want to zoom back to part five i want to show you something from part five and then show you something that i found uh, relevant to that so um let's jump back to part five now these are little sabi bowls in here maybe from the 1930s i should be able to find those in the catalog pink don't often see them in pink though i think it might be called rose in the catalog though so yes, those little pink Sauby, Rosaline is the colour, I can't remember the part number, but anyway, I did show you that in part five, you can go back and look at it again if you want to know the part number. But anyway, um, when I was talking about it in, in the catalogue, I was talking about that it's very similar to um, a bowl, bowls that are made by Stossel in Bohemia at the same time. So at the weekend, I had a 
how can I say, an emergency call to go out and have a look in a, in a charity shop. Someone told me, you need to get down there and have a look, there's something there. And I didn't buy the thing that was there, or things, um, but I did go into the charity shop next door and had a look in there as well, and I picked up something for 50p. And yeah, a Stozzel bowl. Yeah, I thought, oh, I was talking about that. I could show you what I meant. So the, um, I'll show you the difference between this bowl and um, the um, the Sowerby bowl. So the Sowerby bowl has, it has the same number of partitions. Can you see split into four? And it has the same edge like this that comes up. Yeah. And it, but what it does have, it has like a little chevron there, a little indent. But it kind of looks the same. And also, um, some of the Salvia ones are partially frosted and some of these are too as well. But the thing that's different is, I said it had this lug or little flange. And that's the bit that's different on the Salvia. It's a bit more deco on the um, Stozzle one. The Salvia one just has a line down the middle here. And... Um, the Stozzle, hang on, did I get the said that right? The Sowerby one just has a line down the middle here and the Stozzle one has this little flange that sticks out and it's like a double flange, like a proper deco thing. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's, and it's the same color. Miracle of miracles just happened to be there and it was very cheap and I just thought, yeah, I could show you that difference here and now. You saw what, was, what we just looked at and at first glance, you might think Sowerby, because it's, it's got the same part, number of partitions with this slightly narrower one with a little raised cas castellation there. Um, so yeah, just, you know. Anyway, so yeah, and that's one of the difficulties and I'm gonna do a video about the difficulties as well. And I'm gonna do a video about what I saw in the charity shop that I didn't buy and why I didn't buy it. But anyway, um, that's the end of my video from Antiquarium. Um, yeah, it's a good place. I didn't buy anything. There were some things I wanted, I wanted to buy. Um, probably the thing that I wanted to buy the most, which was in part one, I think, which was the, um, the bowl, the, um, X silver, the copper bowl, um, punch bowl, um, from William IV. Um, but yeah, you, you can only have so much stuff, that's the problem. And um, so I did, but I did quite like that. That is the thing that I could buy. And I could have probably replaced it in a bucket at home if I wanted to, but I wouldn't have done that either. I'd just polished it up. But then you couldn't have used it as a punch bowl if it was copper, that would be it. But anyway, um, so if you go into Whedon, Remember, go to the Antiquarium. Um, also, all the contact details for the Antiquarium will be in the description below. Um, all the references will be in the description below. And please remember to like and subscribe because it helps this channel expand. And thank you for watching and have a good night. Good night.